I'm going to analyze this proof. First thing I'd like to do is take a look at my givens. Angle one is congruent to angle two. So I'm going to mark those two angles congruent. I'm also told that AD is congruent to EC, so I'm going to mark those two segments congruent. An unbelievably important idea in this chapter is one of the important properties of isosceles triangles. We know that if triangles have two congruent sides, they also have two congruent opposite angles. Or, conversely, if they have two congruent angles, we know that they have two congruent opposite sides. The first thing you should do if you see two congruent sides or two congruent angles in a triangle is to fill in the other pair of corresponding congruent angles or sides. So if you take a look at my diagram here, we can see two congruent angles in a triangle. I immediately want to state that segment BD is congruent to segment BE. More often than not, that's going to be a huge part of the proof. So I'm going to add that. BD is congruent to BE. Now, as the reason, I could state that this is an isosceles triangle, then state that it has two congruent sides. However, our book gives us the option of just stating that if a triangle has two congruent angles, then its opposite sides are congruent. I'm going to word this in a triangle. This has to be one triangle. If two angles are congruent, then their opposite sides are congruent. The follow-up from this, I now have two congruent sides here. I have two congruent sides down here. If I've got congruent sides and I add congruent sides, I can show that those whole sides of the large triangle are congruent. And that's so incredibly important because if I can show that that large triangle is an isosceles triangle, I know that its base angles are also going to be congruent. So, I'm going to show that BC is congruent to BA. Make sure to put that step in your proof. BC congruent to BA, and that's just the addition property. Now, this is an isosceles triangle. The large triangle is isosceles. Again, I'm not going to use the wording that it's an isosceles triangle because that would take me an extra step. I'm going to go straight to the theorem that says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the opposite angles are congruent. And that's going to tell me that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. In a triangle, if two sides are congruent, then their opposite angles are congruent. And this proof is done. The given information tells me in this proof, the segment WX is congruent to XY also tells me that WZ is congruent to ZY. I'm going to mark both of those in my diagram. The proof asks me to show that angle, w, uh, that angle XWZ is congruent to XYZ. And that's this upper angle here and this, X, the upper, uh, this upper angle on the other side. So the question is, how can I do that? Well, what do I know? The really important concept here, very straightforward, if a triangle has two congruent sides, the angles opposite those two congruent sides are also congruent. And that tells me, this is an isosceles triangle, its base angles are going to be congruent. These lower angles are congruent. So, angle X, W, Y is congruent to angle X, Y, W. In a triangle, if two sides are congruent, 
then their opposite angles are congruent. All right? In addition, I have a second isosceles triangle right here. These two segments are congruent, meaning that these two base angles are congruent. So, I also know that angle ZWY is congruent to angle ZYW. And it's for the same reason as step two. In a triangle, if two sides are congruent, the two angles opposite those sides are congruent. Notice, I don't need to use the term isosceles triangle in this proof using that setup. Am I allowed to? Sure. I could add that statement in, and then I could state that base angles of isosceles triangles are congruent. But this allows us to get around that additional step. So where do I go from here? Well, you can see that the whole angles are congruent on both sides. The lower angles are congruent on both sides. What do I do with those whole angles? To get the remaining upper angles, I subtract those lower angles. Subtracting, lower, uh, subtracting congruent lower angles from those whole angles gives me two new congruent upper angles. That's the subtraction property. So I can close out my proof. XWZ is congruent to XYZ, these two upper angles here, by the subtraction property.